Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the mesh analysis by solving the equation by using the matrix method containing the, the network containing the three loop. Mesh analysis by matrix method having the three loop. The question is find the loop current and also find the power absorbed by the 8 ohm resistor. Consider this network. In this network we need to find the loop current and also power absorbed by this 8 ohm resistor. So here there are two voltage sources available 100 voltage and 40 voltage. So by inspecting this diagram we can easily identify this is the first loop. The current is I1. This is the second loop. The current is I2. This is the third loop. The current is I3. The current direction is uniformly taken. All three loop current is flowing in clockwise direction. By matrix method, we can apply this matrix V equal to I into R. That is, we need to frame the voltage matrix, current matrix and resistant matrix V equal to I into R based on the Ohm's law. In that the resistant matrix R11, R12, R13, R21, R22, R23, R31, R32, R33 this is the resistant matrix. What is R11? R11 is nothing but the resistance available in the loop 1. The loop 1. R22 is resistant available in second loop. R33 is resistant available in third loop. 1, 2 means available between 1 and 2. Like that. We need to find. Now we will find this value one by one. R11 is the resistance available in the first loop. What are the resistance available? This 8 ohm and 4 ohm. These two resistors are available. So 8 plus 4. R11 is the resistance available in the first loop. This is the first loop. In the first loop what we have 8 ohm resistor and 4 ohm resistor. So 8 plus 4. What is R12? In between 1 and 2. What is the resistance commonly available between loop 1 and loop 2? So this is loop 1. This is loop 2. So this 4 ohm is connected commonly between loop 1 and loop 2. So this 4 ohm. See that by seeing the diagram we can easily identify this 4 ohm is available in loop 1 as well as loop 2. So minus 4. Other than diagonal we need to put other values are negative. It's a general procedure. Only the diagonals are positive. All other values are negative. Minus 4. What is R13? The resistance available between first loop and third loop. So there is no connection. In between first and third loop, the second loop is available. So there is no common element available between first loop and third loop. So it is 0. Right? So first loop and third loop, in between second loop is available. So automatically there is no common terminal available between first loop and third loop. Then what is R21? That is also similar. Second loop and first loop. R12 means first loop and second loop, here second loop and first loop, both are same. This 4 ohm is available between first and second loop, so it is minus 4. Then R22, what is R22? The total resistance available in the second loop. So this is the second loop, 4 ohm, 10 ohm, another 10 ohm. These three resistors are available in the second loop. So we need to add this 4 ohm this 10 ohm and this 10 ohm 4 plus 10 plus 10 r22 is the total resistance of the second loop in second loop we have 4 ohm this 10 ohm and another 10 ohm 4 plus 10 plus 10 what is r23 the resistor commonly available between second loop and third loop so this is the second loop this is the third loop so that this 4 ohm is available, this 10 ohm is available commonly between second loop and third loop. See that by seeing the diagram we can easily identify this 10 ohm is available in second loop as well as third loop. So it is minus 10. Then R31, third loop and first loop we already discussed R13 is similar to R31. So there is no common terminal between third and first loop, 0. Then R32 is similar to R23. The resistance between second and third loop. Here third and second loop both are same. So it is 10 ohm minus 10. Then R33. 
what is R33, the resistor available in the third loop? What are the resistors available in the third loop? This 10 ohm and 4 ohm. These two resistors are available in the third loop. 4 ohm and 10 ohm. 4 plus 10. Right? Now framed the resistance matrix. Diagonals are positive. Other than diagonal, all elements are negative. What is current matrix that we need to find? I1, I2, I3. I1, I2, I3. These two are unknown parameter we need to find. What is voltage? In the first loop, the voltage is 100. See the current direction. The current is flowing from down to up. That is from negative plate to positive plate. So, rise in potential, 100 plus 100. See the current direction. Current is flowing upward direction from bottom to up. So, negative to positive. Potential is increasing. So, it is plus 100. In the second loop, the voltage source is not available. Zero. In the third loop, this 40 voltage is available. See the current direction 40. This I3 is flowing from flowing from top to bottom. That is positive terminal to negative terminal. So that drop in potential minus 40. Right? So here the voltage is the current is flowing down to up, negative terminal to positive terminal. So the voltage is increasing plus 100. But here voltage is going downwards positive terminal to negative terminal the voltage is decreasing so minus 40 right so now framed the voltage equation also now we will simplify this resistance matrix so 8 plus 4 12 then minus 4 0 this minus 4 4 plus 10 plus 10 24 then minus 10 0 minus 10 4 plus 10 14 now this is a simplified form of the resistance matrix. Then I1, I2, I3, the voltage 100, 0, minus 40. Now we framed the equation, framed the matrix. Now how will you find this I1, I2 and I3? The formula is available. Delta, delta 1, delta 2, delta 3. The three terms are available. So this is nothing but delta. The resistance matrix is the delta. In the resistance matrix, the first column is replaced by this voltage matrix that is delta 1. If the second column is replaced by voltage matrix, this delta 2. The third column is replaced by volta vol voltage matrix that is delta 3. Right? So this entire matrix is delta. Then by replacing the voltage, we have delta 1, delta 2, and delta 3. Delta 1 by delta will give the I1. Delta 2 to delta will give the I2. Delta 3 by delta will give the I3 value. Right? So, now we need to find what is the delta value del 1, del 2 and del 3. Thereby, we can calculate the current. Now, first consider the delta. Delta is nothing but the resistance matrix. Now, we need to find the determinant. How will you find the determinant? First, take 12. 12 means we need to multiply these two minus these two. So, 24 into 14 minus minus 10 into minus 10. Right? Determinant is very easy. First, we will consider this first element 12. While taking this first element, we need to eliminate these two. We need to multiply these two minus these two. So, 24 into 14 minus minus 10 into minus 10. Then, we will take this element. Normally, the second element will take minus. Already, in your minus is there. So, it becomes plus. The second element normally will take negative. Why? We are multiplying these two terms. Normally it multiplied by opposite. But while taking the negative, we can multiply normally. So this minus 4 is plus 4. Now what we need to do? We need to multiply minus 4 into 14. Then minus these two terms. Already 0 is there. So automatically the term is 0. Then we take the third term. Third term is 0. So automatically the third term is 0. Right? So, 12, 24 into 14 minus 10 into minus 10. Then, plus 4, minus 4 into 14 minus these two terms. That is a determinant. I think your determinant, you are able to know, you, are, uh, you know this determinant very well. Right? So, 12 into 24 into 14 is 336. Minus, minus 10 into minus 10 is plus 100. But already one minus is there, so minus 100. Plus 4 into minus 4 into 14 is minus 56. 
then 12 into 336 minus 100 is 236 minus 4 into minus 56 is minus 224 so 12 into 236 is 2832 minus 224 subtracting these two 2608 so this is the delta value now we calculated the delta value 2608 then how will you find the delta 1 replace the first column with the voltage matrix voltage matrix is 100 0 minus 40 delta 1 is nothing but in the resistance matrix the first column is replaced by the voltage matrix now we'll go for the simplification of this delta 1 so i take this 100 100 into 24 into 14 same thing minus minus 10 into minus 10 same process I'll already here minus is there so it become plus second time normally will take negative already negative is there so it become plus then 0 into 14 0 into 14 minus 0 into 14 become 0 minus minus 10 into minus 40 right the third term is 0 so automatically the third term become 0 so 100 into 24 into 14 is 336 minus this minus this minus 10 into minus 10 become plus 10 that is 100 but already one negative is there so minus 100 plus 4 into this is 0 so here 10 into 40 is 400 but the three negatives are there so finally we'll get negative only so minus 400 so 100 into 336 minus 100 is 236 4 into minus 400 is minus 1600 so this 100 into 236 is 23600 minus 1600 by subtracting these two what we got 22000 the delta 1 value is 22000 now we'll go to the delta 1 value now we'll go to the delta 2 what is delta 2 we need to replace the second column with the voltage matrix first column as it is third column as it is the second column is replaced by the voltage matrix here the first column is replaced now the second column is replaced now we'll go to the determinant so 12 into 0 into 14 that is 0 minus minus 10 into minus 40 right 12 into 0 minus of minus 10 into minus 40 then here we will take the second element we need to put negative minus 100 into minus 4 into 14 minus minus 10 into 0 so automatically 0 the third term also 0 right now we need to simplify this so 12 into minus 10 into minus 40 is 400 plus 400 but our negative is there so it become minus 400 three negatives are there so finally we'll get negative only minus 100 into minus 4 into 14 is minus 56 right now 12 into minus 400 is minus 4800 here minus 100 into minus 56 is plus 5600 so this is negative this is positive so while adding we'll get 800 the delta 2 value is 800 now we'll go to delta 3 so the delta 3 is nothing but third column is replaced by the voltage matrix first column second column as it is third column is replaced by voltage matrix now we'll go to the determinant 12 into 24 into minus 40 24 into minus 40 minus 0 into minus 10 that is 0 right 12 we need to take 12 multiplied by 24 into minus 40 minus 0 into minus 10 this is the first term second term while taking second term this negative already one negative is there so it become positive while taking second term we need to multiply these two minus 4 into minus 40 minus these two 0 so automatically 0 take the third term 100 multiply these two minus 4 into minus 10 this side 24 into 0 automatically 0 so 12 into 24 into minus 40 is minus 960 plus 4 into minus 4 into minus 40 is 160 become positive plus 100 
into minus 4 into minus 10 become plus plus 40 4 into 10 40 both are negative so become 40 so 12 into minus 960 is minus 11,520 plus 4 into 160 is 640 100 into 40 is 4000 now we need to add only this is negative these two are positive so at the final value is minus 6880 so delta 3 we are getting negative value delta 1 delta delta 1 delta 2 are we got positive delta 3 we got negative now we calculated delta delta 1 delta 2 and delta 3 from that we can able to find i1 i2 and i3 what is i1 delta 1 by delta 22,000 divided by 2,608 that is 8.44 ampere the current flowing through the first loop i1 is 8.44 ampere what is i2 delta 2 divided by del 8,000 divided by 2,608 that is 0.306 ampere second loop current is 0.306 ampere then i3 delta 3 by delta minus 6880 divided by 2608 minus 2.64 ampere so the loop 3 current is negative minus why we are getting negative the negative sign indicate the current is flowing in opposite direction what be the direction we assume is not correct we assume the clockwise direction the negative symbol indicates the current is flowing in the anti clockwise direction that is not a matter you can take any direction of current but in the answer automatically you will get if it is the, the direction what you choose is correct means positive if the choose is not correct means you will get negative from that we can easily identify whether the chosen direction is correct or not we have one more question power observed by 8 ohm resistor v into i power is v into i the voltage nearby 8 ohm is 100 the current flowing through the 8 ohm is i1 so 100 into 8.44 is 844 watts power observed by 8 ohm resistor is 844 watts the same problem solved by equation method the link is available in the description box the viewers can see that also so in this problem we solve by matrix method i1 i2 i3 is calculated and power observed also calculated thank you